Hi, Virgo. Welcome to your February 2018 Astro Update. It's Rena here. I'm doing this over again because somebody pointed out to me that I had made an error. Um, and it was at the beginning. It's only one thing. But he said that he stopped watching because of it. And I only wish that this person would have specified what was wrong because I had no idea if, if he was even correct about it. And luckily, it was something that showed up right away. So that's why he probably stopped watching because he figured that everything else was screwed up. And no, it wasn't because the thing about it was Mars is actually going to be in your fourth house, not the opposite house, the 10th house. And it was late at night. I don't have like an astrological wheel here. I'm doing it all by hand. And I was just um, visualizing in my mind and I went backwards instead of forwards. And um, I plead 100% guilty of being a fallible human being. And it's interesting that we are talking about Virgo here, because that person probably is sun in Virgo, maybe Virgo rising, I have a moon in Virgo. So mistakes are um, kind of uh, a loaded issue for Virgos, because Virgos are perfectionists. But you have to realize that people do make mistakes, that doesn't make them um, totally incompetent. And I, if you are going to correct somebody, at least give them the courtesy of being specific about what it is that you're, that you saw that was a mistake because it's only fair if you're going to criticize to actually say what it was. But, um, I do thank that person because I'm glad I don't like to, uh, give out, um, information that is not correct. And, um, this rarely happens, but I, you know, sometimes things happen. Um, so I called that video climbing the ladder of success because I was thinking about Mars being in the 10th house. Um, the fact that it's in the opposite house is kind of an interesting um, little twist in the plot because you do have a lot of sixth house energy in February and you actually rule the sixth house Virgo. And that is something that relates to the work uh, situation, you know, how much work you have, where you're working, your coworkers, all of that can play into what is going on. So ostensibly, we could say that what I initially titled the video is still in play, because your career is, you know, the 10th house is the glory and kind of the recognition that you receive. But it does take actual good old fashioned work to accomplish your goals. And that's where the sixth house comes in. Uh, the sixth house is also health. So some of you may be getting more involved in that. And I'll go, um, I'll get into that as I just go down the line with some of these transits. So with Mars in your fourth house all month, this is your house of home and family. And you've recently had Saturn in this house for um, th almost three years, okay? So there may have been something that occurred, whether it was that you felt like a sense of duty that you had to take care of a, um, your mother or just a parent in general or something to do with a house, housing issue that you felt stuck in a certain place. Um, that you couldn't really, you know, the, a sense of restriction, a sense of responsibility that Saturn uh, uh, brings to that particular sector. Um, now, there's this sense of activity. So it can be in some instances where there's conflict, where um, you're not getting along with your mother or your family of origin in general, or you're renovating your house. Um, maybe you finally want to move. A lot of times they say that when Saturn is in the fourth house, moving isn't really either, I don't know if they say it's um, recommended, but it certainly may be more difficult to have the universe um, conspire with you on that because uh, Saturn tends to ground things and keep them you know, it's not like like Jupiter where you, you see opportunities abound. Actually, speaking of Jupiter, um, 
Jupiter is going into Sagittarius in November of 2018. So if you're somebody who's thinking of selling your house, you may find that things start to really rock and roll at the end of the year. And that now maybe you're renovating and Mars can be like a tear down uh, situation or what have you. So Venus is going to be in your sixth house of work until the 10th of the month and um, also health. So for some people, you may be investing in some kind of uh, equipment that you feel is going to enhance your health, maybe some high priced um, tools like, you know, I always say like a Vitamix or something like that. They're very expensive blender, or very expensive, you know, other kinds of um, uh, luxury items that are associated with improving your health, maybe even like an exercise machine. But um, Venus, in, uh, Venus in the sixth house can also indicate a sense of harmony in the workplace. Maybe you're even moving to a different office uh, where it's, it has a better view. It's, it's just um, you don't have to deal with the same people that rub you the wrong way, whatever. And, um, and then on the 10th, it goes into your seventh house which is the house of partnership. Now you could also link these two, this progression from sixth to seventh, that it has to do with um, any kind of people that you take on as clients, because the seventh house can be clients. And you're really um, seeing a lot of movement in this area and a lot of um, good vibes and money can follow whatever house uh, uh, Venus goes into. So in that seventh house, we could be talking about a um, a particular harmonious situation involving attracting clients to you. And people who are your potential clients, they see you in a very positive way as well. So on the 15th, you have a new moon in the form of a solar eclipse in Aquarius, that sixth house again, so new beginnings. And you can look for these beginnings to manifest for months to come. It's not just on this date. Um, coming into February, there is that total lunar blood moon, super moon, blue moon, lunar eclipse, which is a very powerful full moon in your 12th house. And Virgo, um, this is your opposite house. Uh, this is Pisces natural house. And so all things Pisces uh, relate to this, but you could have very strongly prophetic dreams or just mystical experiences that, um, really help you to release blockages, obstacles, um, I'm thinking about this from having a moon in Virgo because they talk about the moon being karmic and they were saying that people with the moon in Virgo may have lifetimes where they're like, um, hermits, you know, the hermit card in the tarot connects to Virgo, but, um, just, um, any kind of, um, connection to, to like the clergy, maybe being a monk or nun and, that we retain these karmic memories and they affect us now. And so like, uh, you know, me having the moon in Virgo, having that sense of kind of puritanical uh, tendencies. Okay. So for you, um, this may bring up some things that are very deeply embedded within you, whether it's you being a Virgo or other karmic factors. You may, you know, if you ever have had your natal chart looked at, or if you know how to look at it, if you see the 12th house, that can indicate areas that are very karmic for you. And obviously this is like a general reading. So, uh, the, the eclipse may happen in that 12th house may not. Um, I'm looking at this for people, you know, if, if this is your sun sign, this would be your solar chart. And um, even that it may not fall in that, in that sector, because it's 11 degrees of Leo, where this um, eclipse is occurring. But just to keep it simple, I just make it a, a generalized thing. And um, so 
just be aware, um, it, not just on the 31st of January, if you're watching before then, but just in February, you know, what kind of um, th- memories come up for you? Do you have these um, unusual deja vu experiences or just dreams that are very vivid that seem um, like they are hinting at a past life? Um, because that can help you. The 12th house is the house of addictions the house of self undoing other things that we do that trip us up. And this may illuminate that for you. That's kind of where I'm going with that. But um, so then you have have that solar eclipse after that uh, lunar eclipse on the 15th, you have the solar eclipse. Then a couple of days after that, Mercury goes from that sixth to seventh house. So you could be talking to people now. Uh, The seventh house is the house of committed partnerships. So you know, it's possible that some of you have had an affair with somebody in the workplace and you're trying to work it out with your uh, marriage partner. Maybe you uh, are getting into that harmony when Venus goes into your seventh house on the 10th and then Mercury is there on the 17th. You're talking it out. You're, you're you know, it kind of... Um, wanting to get back with your, your, uh, significant other. Maybe you had some kind of a falling out with your, um, marriage partner or significant, significant other, and it led you to stray from the relationship. And now you realize that that wasn't the answer and you want to get back together. And then sure enough, the sun goes into the seventh house on the 18th, a very healing energy and can further, enhance any kind of commitment that you have to a committed partner or one that was supposed to be a committed partner and you're trying to get back into that. Okay, Virgo, so there's my redoing of your February 2018 um, astrological reading. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is Um <laughs> Take care of yourselves. Bye.